Hey friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to Row & Co Farms, where we tell the story of how we live, grow, eat, and work on our homestead. So today we're gonna be in the kitchen and I'm gonna show you how to make a traditional Korean fermented dish called kimchi. This is a really delicious dish. You use some cabbage and some various other spices and veggies, and we're gonna turn it into a delicious sour fermented dish that everyone will love. You can add this to lots of other dishes uh, like soups and stews as a, and as a condiment as well, uh, but it's gonna be a really delicious addition to your meal. So we're gonna be doing this kimchi recipe as part of the Fermented February collaboration that is being put on by Anna at the Fermented Homestead. Uh, she is the fermenting queen and she has put together a uh, collaboration of about 20 different uh, homestead channels who are putting out a new fermentation recipe every single day for the month of February. So there's lots of content to look at. Uh, go and check all of the videos out. I'm gonna leave a playlist down below of all of the rest of the channels. And make sure you comment on all those videos too because if you do, at the end of the month, you will be registered for the drawing for the fermentation kits that Anna is going to be giving away. So make sure you give yourself a chance to win one of those two fermentation kits. So what we're gonna need for this recipe today is of course some cabbage and I'm using Napa cabbage. That is the typical cabbage that is used for these types of recipes, but you can use any cabbage that you have on hand or what you can find. Um, I also have some green onions from my garden. I have a yellow onion. I have a couple of radishes. Um, the recipe I have calls for white radishes, but I have these, you know, yellow, I'm sorry, these pink radishes. And so I'm gonna use those. Also have a little bit of ginger that we're gonna grate up, a couple of carrots that we're going to grate up as well, some garlic, some crushed red pepper. Um, I have a little bit of this um, garlic chili paste that I'm gonna add to it as well. And then we also need a little bit of rice flour. You can use regular flour also, but I'm gluten-free, so I'm gonna be using the rice flour, a little bit of sugar, and a tiny bit of soy sauce, uh, and then some water as well. Oh, and I think the only other thing that I did not put out here is salt. Salt is a key component for fermentation. It is what helps stave off those bad bacteria and allows your good bacteria to start to form. So uh, I'll get the salt out and we'll get that ready in just a minute. So let's start off by cutting and salting our cabbage. I'm going to keep a few of these outside leaves just so we have something to cover up, um, cover up our ferment in a little bit. And you'll, you guys will see what I'm talking about in just a minute. So let's go ahead and start by cutting up our Napa cabbage. I'm gonna cut it in half. but a lot of people do theirs in bigger chunks. The typical way is bigger chunks. So you can go finely or you can go a little bit bigger. So I think I'm gonna go a little in between. We'll split the difference. So initially to start off with, we're trying to get our cabbage cut, and then we're gonna put some salt on it to help start drawing out moisture uh, from the inside. And that's gonna help us with our, our fermentation process because we do need a little bit of liquid for that to happen. So after we chop up our cabbage, we're gonna give it a really good wash to make sure that it's clean before we get started. Let's go ahead now and add two tablespoons of salt. I'm gonna kind of mix it up just a little bit before I add the other tablespoon. There we go. And I would definitely recommend a good quality salt here. <clears throat> not just a table salt. All right, so we're going to just kind of let that mix in just a little bit. Some people actually like to massage it. 
Oops. That'll help bring some of that moisture out. But what we need to do now is just let it sit. And while that's sitting, we're gonna mix up our rice flour paste. So let's go over to the stove and work on that. So to our saucepan, we're going to add three tablespoons of rice flour. and a two-thirds cup of water. And let's go ahead and turn on the burner and give it a stir. Gonna bring this mixture to a boil and then we're gonna add our sugar. It's already starting to thicken up. mixture so we're just going to let this mixture cool off and now we're going to chop up the rest of our veggies and spices that we're going to add to this paste we'll go ahead and chop up some of our veggies So we're gonna chop up some garlic cloves. I have about six of them here. I'm gonna peel them in our little garlic peeler. This takes off all the skins. are off. And we're going to grate these up in our blender with this onion and our chili flakes and our ginger. So let's go ahead and grate up some of our ginger. our food processor we're going to add our onions our garlic the ginger that we grated up
third a cup of paprika. Add two tablespoons of soy sauce. That was a guesstimate. And we're also gonna be adding in that rice flour paste. And then the last thing we're gonna add is a half a cup of crushed red pepper. Also going to add about a tablespoon of this chili paste. Let's blend it up. Take a look. Wow. The smell is potent. Very, very potent. But I think it's ready. So we're going to be using this paste to rub all over our cabbage and vegetables. So let's go check our cabbage and see if it's ready to start. So you can see the salt has really started to make that cabbage wilt down. It's lost a lot of its height in the bowl already. And so I can tell that it's ready to put the paste on. Let's also add in all of our grated vegetables. And now I'm just gonna get in here and I'm gonna work this paste into all this cabbage. This smells amazing, amazing. So let's transfer our kimchi into our large mason jar. Uh, this is a gallon size jar. Um, I think that's gonna be big enough. And then we also have our kraut pounder. So as we add the kimchi into the jar, we're going to pound it down to make sure that we have plenty of room for all of it to fit. This smells so good. Let's mash it down a little bit. This will help it to release more liquid because we want all of the contents to be underneath a little bit of liquid. Last thing that we want to do is just make sure that all of these contents here are covered with liquid and we are going to have to add a little bit of water to this just to make sure that everything is submerged. So now we're going to take some of those leaves that we saved from earlier 
and we're going to use the leaf. We're gonna put it down inside here and we're gonna use that to help push all of our contents down. <clears throat> and then we're gonna use a fermentation weight on top of that. Use a couple of these leaves here. This will just help prevent any mold from happening inside of our container. Okay, so I'm gonna get a couple of my fermentation weights and put those in here to hold everything down. So these are fermentation weights. Uh, these fit right down inside a regular mouth mason jar, um, but since this is the gallon size jar, I'm just gonna use a couple of these and we're just going to set those down to hold those contents down. And I am gonna to have to add a little bit more liquid because we just wanna make sure everything is submerged. And there we go. I just added a little water because my brine and everything in here is already very salty. Um, so I didn't feel like I needed to add any additional salt. So uh, I just added very little water. All right, so as you can see here, everything is submerged. Whoop, it, with the exception of that one little spot, I'm gonna see if I can get that down. So we really don't want anything to be above the liquid. Anything that's above the liquid has the potential to be a contaminant and bring mold in. I think that's good. So now we're gonna give this about four days to do its fermentation process and then we'll give it a taste test. So I'm gonna be using a lid for this jar and I'm just gonna be placing it on here, not super tight, just enough to where um, some gases can escape if they need to. I have plenty of room in the top of this jar that I don't think that this is gonna bubble over, um, but just in case, if you have um, less room in your jar, you wanna make sure you set this on like a plate or inside a casserole dish to capture any liquid that may uh, bubble over in the fermentation process. So, all right guys, I'll check back in shortly and I'll let you know how we're looking with our ferment. Let's take a look at the kimchi. It's about two days into its ferment and I don't see any big action happening yet, but let's see. Well, maybe there is. I see a little bit of bubbling happening up here, but yeah, this kimchi is gonna be so good. Mm. It smells good. Okay, so it is bubbling a little bit in there. There's not a lot happening yet, but there's definitely something happening. So, very good. All right, guys, so let's follow up on our kimchi. It has been five days and we're going to open this up. I have been watching it every day. I definitely see some signs in here of fermentation. Um, we see some bubbling going on. It definitely uh, smells like it's starting to get sour, but I don't think we're there yet. It smells delicious. It smells so spicy. I cannot wait to try this. Okay, so let's look at a few observations just on the on the outside of the jar while we have it here. Um, so initially we had more liquid on the top and then it sort of kind of swapped out and a lot of the liquid is now on the bottom and this stuff has kind of risen up and a lot of our ingredients in here kind of started to try to rise up in there too. And there are definitely some pieces in here floating around. I added a third fermentation weight in here to help hold everything down, but there's still some pieces that are floating. So I keep grabbing those and throwing them out so that way they're not um, adding to the bacteria in a bad way. I don't wanna have mold growing in there. So otherwise, I don't see any signs of any mold. It all looks really healthy. 
It's just a matter of how long do you want it to ferment and how sour do you want it to, uh, to taste to you. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer so you can see some of this bubbling and stuff happening in here. I'm trying to find a good example. And there's more on this side. It's hard to see inside here, in here, there's all kinds of little bubbles that are forming. And eventually they make their way up to the top, but it's not a crazy amount like a fizzing action like you see in some um, like kombuchas and things like that. It's not one of those kind of ferments. Um, it has plenty of um, ability to release air. Oh, did you see that? There were some bubbles there that just popped up. I guess that's from shifting it around a little bit. But overall, our kimchi looks really healthy. You can see that the color is really like orange all throughout now. But yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and now let's take some of our weights out. And we're gonna give this a taste. All right. Here, let me adjust the camera again, guys. There we go. All right, now, let me get in here. Remember, clean utensils. I washed my hands before I started. Clean hands, clean utensils. I'm gonna get a little scoop of this out. I'm gonna get more than a scoop because <laughs> even if it's not, if I let it go a little longer, that's fine. It's still, it's still gonna taste really good today. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Mmm. Oh my goodness. That is spicy. But it is a good spicy. I'm doing a happy dance. I am not letting this ferment longer. This is perfect. This is so good. I'm gonna have to get another clean dish because <laughs> I want some more. Mm. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave the recipe for this in a link down below. It's gonna take you over to my website, rowandcofarms.com. You're gonna get a whole bunch of recipes over there, so go check that out. I'm definitely going to recommend this recipe right here. It is so good. If you like spicy food and you like fermented food, this is excellent. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. I'm getting another bowl, but here's what's going to happen next after I get another bowl. Lid on, and this goes into the refrigerator. I am going to leave the fermentation weights out. Um, once this goes in the fridge, there's a lot less chance of mold and stuff happening in here. So this is great. <laughs> I'm so excited to eat this. So I'm going to add this to any dish that I so choose. I can eat it plain, just like this, a few bites at a time. I'm going to add this to ramen noodles, stir fry, any Asian dish, Japanese, Korean, um, uh, pho. If you like pho, that, that soup dish, that Vietnamese soup. All those things would be an excellent candidate for a little bit of kimchi added to that. So I highly, highly recommend this, guys. Please, please check it out. Um, this has been a great time. I have loved my whole participation in fermentation February. I have loved my participation in fermented February. I don't know why I keep saying that wrong. But you guys, check this recipe out. Check out the rest of the collaboration with all of the other YouTubers who are doing fermentation recipes for the rest of the month. And then make sure that you check out Anna. She's gonna be doing a live stream on the last day of the month where she's gonna give away those Mason Top kits. That's gonna be a great start for anybody that is new to fermentation, that needs help with their 
their kit, their, their tools that they need to get started. So make sure you leave comments down below. That's how you get registered for the drawing for the Mason Top kits. You gotta leave a comment in all of those videos. So check them out. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time here at Rowan Co. Farms. In the meantime, I'm going to eat some kimchi.